Thanks for going into. Oh, look at it. We got SoCal in the house. Uh, Nico, the uh, the Shulk God, and yeah, hit or miss. Snake, oh, this is going to be an interesting match. So Nico, of course, is going to be, you know, he's definitely in the top five in SoCal High that's going to be on the next PR. I'm not 100% sure, but, there, you know, there's a lot of contenders, but Nico's definitely one of the strong ones. And while Hacker manages to fight a lot of people whenever he streams, it's going to be a big question of how much experience he has in the Shulk match. A very rare character to see, generally speaking. But as far as Snake's tools go, he's able to check a lot of space that Shulk needs in order to prepare himself. Whether or not it's stifling him and being able to keep him from switching between his arts, or even pressuring him to the ledge and being able to contest some of these more unorthodox hitboxes. Nonetheless, Nico taking a very quick start to the set. Yeah, one of the things that Hacker is going to have to contend with is, you know, there's quite a bit of snakes that I'm sure Nico has had to deal with. There are not a lot of shulks like Nico in the world, let, you know, let alone in, in the country. So it's uh, it's definitely going to be some sort of adaptation that Hacker is going to go. But he's definitely a capable player and made it so far into winners. And you know, it's, it's funny, Lux, because coming into Ultimate, a lot of players saw a lot of value in the changes to Shulk. But we still don't see a lot of Schultz, especially at the level that Nico provides. So it really is a treat to see him performing as well as he is. Hope to see him go far in the bracket. But first, he's got to get around the snake. And as far as getting around snake goes, I just want to bring up how well Nico is navigating the grenades in the C4. I say as he runs into some tips. <laughs> hey, no, I respect that risk reward because he got that grab. He had speed monado or speed art on, and it would have been a big damage uh, advantage situation. Sometimes you just got to go for it, and that's why it's risk reward. There is a risk to it. You get up tilted, and you know sometimes you pay the price. Um, and uh, Hacker is just having a difficult time. One of the things about navigating with Shulk that's so interesting is Shulk's hitboxes are so big, so he's liable to hit a grenade, you know, almost inadvertently because he hits like pretty much one third of the entire stage. Right. And on top of that, one thing to note is C4's hitbox is box is actually deceptively large. So oh, that's if, a little trouble. <laughs> I never count out jump art. That man is coming back. Yeah, and it's, uh, they're going through it, and wow, what was once a big deficit was now a pretty close match. Nico in danger of, you know, dropping the stock at any minute, but he's able to clean out Hacker's uh, second stock, and we're right back into the thick of it. Grenade's coming out. Very good play. You know, a lot of snakes to kind of get, if they drop a, a stock, they get into that revenge mode, but he set up his time, set up his grenade play, and got that up tilt for it. One of the things that's dangerous about this matchup in particular for Nico is that Shulk benefits so much from being able to wait, bait an approach, and then punish it hard because he delivers so much damage and he's able to change on the fly how an opponent has to combo him or try to track his movement yeah. thanks to how the arts affect him. But with Snake, it sort of turns the matchup on its head. So you can't really camp him out. Otherwise, you're facing a flurry of grenades, a fast-moving Nikita, off smash, C4, Snake himself charging in at you. And we've already seen that Hacker is doing a good job of seeing where Nico's going to position himself and punishing the landing on these areas. Yeah, definitely doing much better these last couple stocks than he was the first one. Kind of, you know, as we said, it's a novelty. You got to adapt on the fly. So real credit to Hacker, you know, able to adapt immediately, pretty much. And he has himself right in the thick of it. But Nico putting on the good pressure, has Snake in that disadvantage state. This could be trouble. Wow, waited just too long on the ledge. Got a little tentative, and Nico capitalized with a smash uh, art order. He's doing a little sigh of relief. Looked like a pretty stressful end to that game one. And with good reason. Hacker was really putting in the work towards the end of that. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, but Hack adapting on the fly. I wouldn't be surprised if he made, comes out, you know, comes out hot in game two and uh, puts Nico on the ropes. We'll see. Nico, also an adaptable player. That's kind of, you know, you were mentioning that there aren't a lot of Shulks that we've been seeing in the meta. It takes a special kind of player to really command effectively five different characters on the fly. You talk about like, there's not, a, you know, there's not a lot of Pokemon trainers because you have to learn three different characters. It's almost like Shulk. You have to kind of learn five different characters that you could switch to on the fly very similar. That's kind of how I partition it in my mind. And I can't handle that, but Nico can. Yeah, with, with Shulk, it's like you have to change your style like so vastly depending on which art you have. And then even at that, the, the timer on the arts, it's all a big factor because being able to switch to shield, for instance, in the blink of an eye is so important for saving yourself or whether or not you want to snap to smash like we saw Nico did a couple of times in game one just so we can make sure he can really put the pressure on Akira. One like, of the things I want to talk about is uh, you're, we're on Unova now and the interesting thing is, for this stage in particular, I feel like Snake 
has it as a counterpick in his pocket for a particular reason. Sometimes it's difficult to track the grenades in the C4 just based off the palette colors and the lights, you know, situation going on. There's a lot of stuff going on, more so than like Pokemon Stadium 2 or some of the other, you know, Smash Bros. or some of the brighter, you know, stages that we have in the stage list. Very true. Lights are looking mighty dim here on Innova. And you can't see the C4 once it stops blinking. And on top of that, it's difficult to see the grenades when the lightning flashes. So if Hakko's able to keep that in mind, controlling all aspects of this stage is going to be fairly easy for him. But Hakko's doing a very good job of just navigating the stage well. He's not staying in one place, so he doesn't have to really worry about where C4 is partitioning off the stage or how grenades can be trying to lock out the platforms from being an option. I was getting a little worried there about Nico's shield, but he decided to wait it out just a little bit. You know, content to just let the shield regenerate. Probably a smart play. Pacing in the match is always so important, especially against a snake player. If you're able to control and uh, not take the grenade damage, and then pick your moment to go in and put the hurt on him, that's usually the recipe for success against you know playing that game. Kill the snake since 2008. And you know, it's like I was saying earlier, we're shocked so much off of being able to just wait. And a lot of it doesn't just come from being able to punish effectively with his hitboxes. A lot of it's just how much his shulk is resource management. From the shield, to the arts themselves, to even being able to slow the pace of the match and just bring things back to neutral. Giving up that little bit of stage control can actually go a long way for a character like Shulk. That was a brilliant trap, putting out that Nikita has Nico in all kinds of trouble, but he puts up the shields and he just got really heavy on the dash attack. He went almost nowhere at 150%. So. <laughs> he does not care for any knockback. Even at 155, Snake's bringing a ton of kill moves to the plate, but you don't got to worry about that. But in jump bar, we might have to worry about it, but in this place, Nikita is going to give up the opportunity for Hacker. Again, yeah, a little crafty in the recovery situation. You have to. Hacker, Hack is putting on such good pressure with the Nikita. Unfortunately, got to open up a little bit. That could be an opportunity. And there's the up tilt that connects directly. And Hack, very good job mitigating the damage, keeping himself in the game. It is uh, game two, and Nico sitting on an advantage. He doesn't want to let it slip away too quickly here. And you feel the tension building, the lightning strikes in the background. The light, you know, the ambient light is just there. Both players probably feeling it, and Nico doing such a good job, kind of pulling away. But Hack battling back, puts on big damage, gets the C4. That's probably what we were talking about. Hard to keep track of everything going on. He's been doing a really good job of just keeping his awareness of his own projectiles, figuring if Nico responds in this way, oh, I have this ready, I can just let it rip. These grenades are putting a ton of work for him, and he's just kind of looking like game two. Even though Nico was sitting in the lead, Hacker was adapting very well. But we're catching a very strange landing from Hacker. All of a sudden, he's eating a forward smash. Now he's looking at his last stock for his side, potentially. Yeah, he's on his last stock, red alert for Snake, and Nico. Just doing Nico things. That was a big forest match for him because he was on the ropes and really didn't have much going on him, going for him momentum-wise. And he was able to just turn it around with one flick of the C stick, gets an up B out of shield, and that's just kind of a, a heat check on hack. You're gonna have to respect my uh, shield pressure. Uh, no tech gets got the red flash, uh, untechable, and we're right back into the last sock. Another close game coming here in game two. Play neutral. You get a lot of mileage with that, you know, down air out of shield. But unfortunately, he was holding the grenade and exploded and put not just damage on him, but put him in a disadvantage state. Nico going off, put on so much damage, and Hack is in big trouble. Another forward air off stage. Oh, oh man. Just like that, a clean 2 0 for Nico. He's been advancing onwards. After Snake is looking really nice. So. Yeah. He may not be in total jeopardy as far as the loser's bracket's concerned. Just gotta tighten up a few things. I feel uh, one thing that Hacker was kind of faulting at was a lot of tech situations he was setting up. Whether or not he was just ready to throw away Nico, set up for the ledge play, where he could have potentially set up for just getting the up tilts, yeah. putting grenades down. He was always responding really well to where Nico was placing himself on the stage. But I feel like if he just kept it a bit more close quarters, yeah. things might have ended out differently for him. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's a shock. One of the things is if you give him room to really operate and get that sword out, and then, then he's in business. But mm -hmm. if you stuff him and beat him to the punch, that's when he that's when he has some struggles going on. But good set overall from Nico. You know, hack, I hope he brings out stock two hack for the, uh, the loser's yeah, bracket. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the kind of hacker I want to see. I love Snake. Yeah. So 